And so then it starts at rest, so its initial kinetic energy is zero. Good. <clears throat> so for the potential energy, it's at a hot. So well, now that we have, we are using seven meters. We should set that to zero, I guess. Yeah, we are going to be focusing on what happens here. So I agree with you. It would be most convenient to treat this as a height of zero. Mm -hmm. So then its initial mechanical energy is 117.6. OK, good. So for the U final, it's at a zero height, but then it gives, so then that would be zero. So would the potential energy kind of like break into two components of like its height component and like the spring component? That's right. I didn't talk about that, but you're figuring that out. That's good. That's so right. the height component would zero out anyways. So the spring component would be uh, one half. K x squared. Good. So. That's right. So yeah, I didn't really spell that out, but you figured it out. But let's see how we can build that in more systematically. What we should have done to start with is we should have started by saying that there's two different types of potential energy here. Gravitational potential energy from the weight and spring potential energy. So again, here we have gravitational potential energy plus spring potential energy. It's a good idea to start by writing down all the separate terms, just so that you're being systematic and thinking about everything clearly. So in this case, there's two different types of potential energy. So here I can't just write U. I have to write SPU for spring energy or grav U for gravitational energy. Mm -hmm. So what you figured out here was the gravitational potential energy. What was the original spring potential energy? Zero. Yeah, that, that's right. How do we know? Because it's at its natural length. Yeah, originally, this was at its natural length, because there was nothing even touching it. So x would be 0, and this would be 0, which is why it was safe to just almost ignore it. But still probably better to write in a term for that, since it appears on the opposite side. So you were right earlier when you figured out that initially, the only type of energy was this gravitational potential energy. All right, and now over here, I think you figured out that because you chose this to be your height of 0, there's going to be no gravitational potential energy, only the spring potential energy. it's got to its maximum compression. It's well, going to release and push the box and to the left. That's right. So that really is the point where it's changing direction again. The, how far will it compress? It's going to compress. So at this point, we're going to be moving to the right. We're going to be moving to the right. But as we compress more and more, it's going to get harder and harder to keep compressing. You know from using a spring that the more you pre press into it, the greater the force is going to be. So eventually, you get to a point where you're changing direction. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the maximum the spring is going to compress. So this is very similar to the previous problem, where there's a little hidden information, which is that at the final position, we're changing direction. I think you saw that. So in our final position, the kinetic energy would be 0. It's good that you saw that, because again, that's, uh, a lot of students miss that. So this is the only type of energy in the final position. Mm -hmm. All right, so this would be.
did you get? Uh, 7.66 meters. Okay, so I'll round that to 7.7. <coughs> 7. What's the answer to the question then? How far the spring will compress. Yeah, what is the answer? 7.7. .7. Yeah, this is the answer. This tells us how far the spring is going to compress. Maybe we should have built that into our sketch. This distance here is x, and I can label that with a question mark. That's what the question is asking us for here. It's always good to build the question into the diagram. All right, well, this is another great example of how powerful this method is. Um, and again, this is a very complicated path, but we can just ignore all these complications in the middle. As, as long as we knew that there was going to be zero net work done by the non-conservative forces in the middle, it doesn't matter how complicated the middle of the path is. Um, so again, some students would try to split this up maybe into three different portions. What's the speed here? What's the speed here? What's the speed the instant we hit the um, spring? And then what distance do we compress it? But we can really just leave all that out in the middle and just focus on the initial and the final points. So that was good. Um, Something I hadn't mentioned before, but you, you kind of figured out, is some problems have more than one type of potential energy. If there's more than one type of potential energy, you simply have to write a term <coughs> for all the different types of potential energy. In the handout, I think I wrote one great big equation that has all the different types of potential energy and all the different types of kinetic. Mm -hmm. And then it's your job on any particular problem to figure out which of those types are relevant. For example, it was pretty obvious on the previous problem that we should not include a spring potential energy, because there was no spring. But there will pretty much always be gravitational potential energy, because there's always a weight. And there's pretty much always going to be some types of kinetic energy going on. But you have to watch out for when we need the spring. The safest thing is to write the equation out in general, and then put in zeros for the things that are zero. Again, we use the idea that when we get to the maximum compression, that's the point where we're changing direction. So this would be zero. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.